Hi, this is Tim. If this is your first time watching or listening to one of my readings of the Lost Books, I'd encourage you to listen to the following introduction. That way you'll understand why I provide these readings as a resource for you. If you have heard one before, you won't miss anything if you skip the intro and go straight to the reading. I hope you enjoy and are blessed by this reading of one of the books, Hidden or Lost to History. For centuries, the ancient and enigmatic books of the Apocrypha have been shrouded in mystery and intrigue, but as knowledge continues to increase, these books and others lost to history are finally coming out of the shroud of darkness and into the light. While the knowledge of the existence of these texts is beyond debate at this point, what is contested is whether or not they hold any significance in the life of a modern-day follower of Yahusha. Full translations of many of these texts are difficult to find, and in my opinion, this is not by chance, but done intentionally in the continuing attempt to keep people in darkness. So in an effort to make them available to anyone, this series will include readings from many of the lost books for you to consider for yourself. For many Christians, the thought of considering anything not included in your 66 book Bible is unsettling, and I completely understand, as I once was where you are. But if you're truly seeking the truth, I strongly encourage you to research how your Bible came to be. It won't take you long to discover that there are over 2,000 different versions that are translated into over 7,000 different languages. For me, that fact alone warrants asking the question, who decided what was canon and why did they make those decisions? If you'd like more information, I did a three-part series on coming out of Babylon, and I provide a brief history of how the Bible we have today came to be. For the purpose of setting the stage for what you'll hear in this video, I'll provide my justification for creating this video series in the first place. In most modern translations of the Bible, the Old Testament contains 39 books. But what if I told you that the first King James Version that was bound in 1611 actually had 54 books? I hope, at least at a minimum, this fact alone would cause you to ask yourself what happened to the other 15. In the Sefer, for example, which is the binding of scriptures I use for my primary study, it contains 60 books in the Old Testament. This is more books than any other modern translation I'm aware of, with the closest being the Ethiopian Bible, which has 55. These missing additional 15 books fall into one of two categories, academically speaking. The first and most commonly known is the Apocrypha, which comes from the Latin word Apocryphus, which means secret or not approved for public reading. This initial determination was made by Jerome when he was compiling the first edition of the Latin Vulgate. The other six books included in the Sefer fall into the seminarian defined category of Pseudopigrapha, meaning falsely inscribed or bearing a false title. However, there is much disagreement on this subject. Many who study these ancient texts choose to rather place the so-called pseudepigrapha writings into a category called deuterocanonical, meaning a second canon. But regardless of what the supposed experts say, the purpose of this series is not intended to further debate the authenticity of these writings, or for that matter their categorization, but rather to provide you access to the writings themselves, with the intention of allowing you to make an informed decision for yourself. Beyond these 60 books, did you know that all the Bibles considered to be canon actually refer to an additional 32 books by name? One example can be found in Numbers chapter 21 verses 14 and 15, where it's written, Wherefore it is said in the Sefer or the book of the wars of Yahuwah, what he did in the Red Sea, in the brooks of Arnon, and at the stream of the brooks that goes down to the dwelling of Ar, and lies upon the border of Moab. And while some of those books named fall into one of the two categories I mentioned, for example, Jasher and Jubilees, the book of Enoch was quoted directly by Yahusha Hamashiach himself. He did so in the Gospels at least 14 times, and the 1611 King James Version actually cross-references these passages in its side margins. So if you simply add the 54 books originally included in the first binding of the King James to the books mentioned by name in the so-called 66 book canon, there are at least 86 books that were written no sooner than 400 years before Yahusha walked the earth. This is only scratching the surface. The Dead Sea Scrolls contain fragments of over 100 unique writings from ancient times. 
many of which date to as late as 200 BCE. In this video, you'll hear one of those books. Whenever possible, I'll provide a link to the actual text itself, and I'll always include a document that contains a comparison of many of the different Bibles and their contents. I'll also include a list of many of the other lost books that have been concealed from the world. In each video, I'll be reading from the Sefer, as it transliterates the names of the Father and Son, as well as restoring the Hebrew et, which is the Aleph and Tav meaning divine throughout the text. Hebrew, like most other languages, does not always translate perfectly to English. When you combine this with the translation biases that exist in every single translation, there are occasions when the Hebraic perspective is completely lost. So whenever I'm able, I'll do my best to provide that perspective. I can only speak for myself, but what I found is that these writings, when considered in their totality with the original texts, connect many of the dots and fill in the gaps that for thousands of years were filled with speculation and opinion. What you choose to do with this information is entirely up to you. I know one thing beyond doubt. There is only one truth. The truth is embodied in the man, Yahusha HaMashiach. This means that those seeking him in humility, with all their heart, mind, and strength, will find the truth. And the truth will undoubtedly set us free. I pray Yahoo bless you, and he place his Ruach Emet, which is his spirit of truth, upon you. Originating from a period of exile and turmoil, the books of Baruch, whose name means blessed in Hebrew, were written by Baruch, the son of Niryahu. Baruch was the scribe, companion, and friend of the well-known and great Navi or prophet Yirmiyahu. This ancient text was originally included in and counted as canon in the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. It offers us a unique window into the experience of the children of Yasharel during their great tribulation as captives in Babylon. Both 1 and 2 Baruch were written to a people in despair, grappling with the destruction of their homeland and their temple, yet in the middle of the ruins, they both shine as beacons of hope. One Baruch begins with a confession of sins, acknowledging the transgressions against Yahuwah's Torah, which led to their chastisement. It moves quickly to an exploration of wisdom personified in the form of the Word. And if you've ever read the Gospel of Yochanan, which is John chapter 1, then you know that the Word is Yahusha HaMashiach. The books emphasize the importance of wisdom and stresses the importance of seeking it in Yahuwah's Torah. They both encourage us to seek wisdom and humility and meekness while trusting Yahuwah to give us understanding so that we can apply it in our own lives. Both books are timeless messages, but as the world grows closer to the Great Tribulation, they are even more relevant today as they were when they were first written. In Tu Baruch, the narrative transitions into foretellings or prophecies concerning the end times, and it serves as a warning to those walking apart from Yahuwah's Torah, while serving also as a roadmap for navigation of the tribulation to come for all those walking in the way of Torah. These books provide more details about the tribulation than all of the other canonical books of the Bible combined, and after hearing it, you undoubtedly understand why the adversaries of Yah wanted to conceal it. What you're about to hear in great detail is the foretelling of the time of great upheaval, and it may frighten some of you, but please listen to the entirety of both books as ultimately they also detail the promises of protection during the tribulation and the final restoration of peace and justice, just as Yahuwah has promised from the beginning. To summarize, born into Baruch, serve as guides to the coming tribulation, providing prophetic insights as well as practical wisdom for all of us who are called to endure until the end. They remind us that even in the face of such great tribulations, because of Yahuwah there is always hope, and that wisdom, sought and applied, can lead us through the darkest times, even the darkest of human history. I pray the Ruach HaKodesh Open your eyes that you might see, and open your ears that you might hear, and you find peace 
and the truth of Yahuwah's words given to his proclaimer, Baruch. 1 Baruch, Chapter 1 And these are the words of the Sefer, which Baruch, the son of Niryahu, the son of Ma'ayasahu, the son of Sadik Yahu, the son of Asa Yahu, the son of Kelk Yahu, wrote in Babel, in the fifth year, and in the seventh day of the month, what time as the Kastim took Yerushalayim and burned it with fire. And Baruch did read the words of the Sefer in the hearing of Yekin Yahu, the son of Yahu Yakim, king of Yehuda, and in the ears of all the people that came to hear the Sefer, and in the hearing of the nobles, and of the king's son, and in the hearing of the elders, and of all the people, from the lowest unto the highest, even of all them that dwelt at Babel by the river Cud, whereupon they wept, fasted, and prayed before Yahuwah. They made also a collection of money according to every man's power, and they sent it to Yerushalayim unto Joachim the high priest, the son of Kelkyahu, the son of Shalom, and to the priests, and to all the people that were found with him at Yerushalayim. At the same time, when he received the vessels of the house of Yahuwah, they were carried out of the temple to return them in the land of Yahud, the tenth day of the month, Sivan, namely, silver vessels, which Sadik Yahu, the son of Yoshiyahu, king of Yahuda, had made. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, had carried away Yekinyahu, and the princes, and the captives, and the mighty men, and the people of the land from Yerushalayim, and brought them unto Babel. And they said, Behold, we have sent you money to buy you ascending smoke offerings, and sin offerings, and incense, and prepare you manna, and offer upon the altar of Yahuwah Eloheinu, and pray for the life of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, and for the life of Baal his son, that their days may be upon the earth as the days of heaven, and Yahuwah will give us strength, and lighten our eyes, and we shall live under the shadow of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, and under the shadow of Baal his son, and we shall serve them many days and find favor in their sight. Pray for us also unto Yahuwah Eloheinu, for we have sinned against Yahuwah Eloheinu, and unto this day the fury of Yahuwah and his wrath is not turned from us. You shall read this sefer which we have sent unto you to make confession in the house of Yahuwah upon the feasts and solemn days. And you shall say, To Yahuwah Eloheinu belongs righteousness, but unto us the confusion of faces, as it come to pass this day unto them of Yahud, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to our kings, and to our princes, and to our priests, and to our prophets and to our fathers. For we have sinned before Yahuwah and disobeyed him and have not hearkened unto the voice of Yahuwah Eloheinu to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Since the day that Yahuwah brought our forefathers out of the land of Mitzrayim unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto Yahuwah Eloheinu and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Wherefore the evils cleaved unto us, and the curse which Yahuwah appointed by Moshe his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Mitzrayim, to give us a land that flows with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. Nevertheless, if not hearkened unto the voice of Yahuwah Eloheinu, according unto all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us, but every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart to serve strange Elohim and to do evil in the sight of Yahuwah Eloheinu. Chapter 2 Therefore Yahuwah has made good on his word, which he pronounced against us, and against our judges that judged Yasharel, and against our kings, and against our princes, and against the men of Yasharel and Yehuda, to bring upon us great plagues, such as never happened under the whole heaven, as it came to pass in Yerushalayim, according to the things that were written in the Torah of Moshe, that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. Moreover, he has delivered them 
to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be as a reproach and a desolation among all the people round about where Yahuwah has scattered them. Thus, we were cast down and not exalted because we have sinned against Yahuwah Eloheinu and have not been obedient unto his voice. To Yahuwah Eloheinu appertains righteousness, but unto us and to our fathers open shame as appears this day. For all these plagues are come upon us, which Yahuwah has pronounced against us. Yet have we not prayed before Yahuwah that we might turn everyone from the imaginations of his wicked heart? Wherefore Yahuwah watched over us for evil, and Yahuwah has brought it upon us. For Yahuwah is righteous in all his works which he has commanded us. Yet we have not hearkened unto his voice to walk in the commandments of Yahuwah that he has set before us. And now, O Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, that have brought your people out of the land of Mitzrayim with a mighty hand and a high arm, and with signs and with wonders, with great power, and have gotten yourself a name as appears this day. O Yahuwah Eloheinu, we have sinned, we have done wickedness, we have dealt unrighteously in all your ordinances. Let your wrath turn from us, for we are but a few left among the heathen where you have scattered us. Hear our prayers, O Yahuwah, and our petitions, and deliver us for your own sake and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away, that all the earth may know that you are Yahuwah Eloheinu, because Yasharel in his posterity is called by your name. O Yahuwah, look down from your holy house and consider us. Bow down your ear, O Yahuwah, to hear us. Open your eyes and behold, for the dead that are in the graves, whose souls are taken from their bodies, will give unto Yahuwah neither praise nor righteousness, but the soul that is greatly vexed, which goes stooping and feeble, and the eyes that fail, and the hungry soul, will give you praise and righteousness, O Yahuwah. Therefore we do not make our humble supplication before you, O Yahuwah, for the righteousness of our fathers and of our kings. For you have sent out your wrath and indignation upon us, as you have spoken by your servants the prophets, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, Bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babel. So shall you remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. But if you will not hear the voice of Yahuwah to serve the king of Babel, I will cause to cease out of the cities of Yahud, and from without Yerushalayim the voice of mirth, and the voice of joy, and the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. And the whole land shall be desolate of inhabitants. But we would not hearken unto your voice to serve the king of Babel. Therefore you have made good the words that you spoke by your servants the prophets, namely, that the bones of our kings and the bones of our fathers should be taken out of their place. And lo, they are cast out to the heat of the day and to the frost of the night. And they died in great miseries by famine, by sword, and by pestilence. And the house which is called by your name you have laid waste, as it is to be seen this day, for the wickedness of the house of Yasharel and the house of Yehuda. O Yahuwah Eloheinu, you have dwelt with us after all your goodness and according to all that great mercy of yours, as you spoke by your servant Moshe in the day when you did command him to write the Torah for the children of Yasharel, saying, if you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations, or I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captives they shall remember themselves, and shall know that I am Yahuwah Eloheim, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck, and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before Yahuwah, and I will bring them again into the land which I promised, with an oath unto their fathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and they shall be Adonim of it, and I will increase them, 
and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Yasharel out of the land that I have given them. Chapter 3 O El Shaddai, Elohim of Yasharel, the soul in anguish, the troubled Ruach cries out to you, Hear, O Yahuwah, and have mercy, you who are merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before you, for you endure forever, and we perish utterly. O El Shaddai, Elohim of Yasharel, Hear now the prayers of the dead inhabitants of Yasharel and of their children, which have sinned before you, and not hearkened unto the voice of you, their Elohim, for the which caused these plagues cleave unto us. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon your power and your name now at this time. For you are Yahuwah Eloheinu, and you, O Yahuwah, will we praise. And for this cause you have put your fear in our hearts, to the intent that we should call upon your name and praise you in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned against you. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where you have scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from Yahuwah Eloheinu. Hear, Yasharel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. How happens it, Yasharel, that you are in your enemy's land, that you are waxen old in a strange country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted with them that go down into Sheol. You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. For if you had walked in the way of Elohim, you should have dwelled in peace forever. Learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding, that you may know also where is length of days and life, where is the light of the eyes and peace. Who has found out her place, or who has come into her treasures? Where are the princes of the heathen become, and such as ruled the beasts upon the earth? They that had their pastime with the fowls of the air, and they that hoarded up silver and gold, wherein men trust, and made no end of their getting. For they that wrought in silver, and were so careful, and whose works are unsearchable, they are vanished, and gone down to Sheol, and others are come up in their steads. Young men have seen light, and dwelt upon the earth, but the way of knowledge have they not known, nor understood the paths thereof, nor laid hold of it. Their children were far off from that way. It has not been heard of, in Kenaan, neither has it been seen in Taman, the Hagrim that seek wisdom upon the earth, the merchants of Moran and of Taman, the authors of fables and searchers out of understanding, none of these have known the way of wisdom or remember her paths. O Yasharel, how great is the house of Elohim, and how large is the place of his possession, great and has no end, high and unmeasurable. There were the Nephilim, famous from the beginning, that were of so great stature and so expert in war. Those did not Yahuwah choose, neither gave he the way of knowledge unto them. They were destroyed because they had no wisdom and perished through their own foolishness, who has gone up into heaven and taken her and brought her down from the clouds, who has gone over the sea and found her and will bring her for pure gold. No man knows her way, nor thinks of her path, but he that knows all things knows her, and has found her out with his understanding. He that prepared the earth forevermore has filled it with four-footed beasts. He that sends forth light, and it goes, calls it again, and it obeys him with fear. The star shined in their watches, and rejoiced. When he calls them, they say, Here we be. And so with cheerfulness they showed light unto him that made them. This is our Elohim, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison to him. He is found out all the way of knowledge, 
and has given it unto Jacob, his servant, and to Yasharel, his beloved. Afterward did he show himself upon the earth and conversed with men. Chapter 4 This is the Sefer of the commandments of Elohim and the Torah that endures forever. All that guard it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn you, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that you might be illuminated. Give not your honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto you to a strange nation. O Yasharel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to Elohim are made known to us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Yasharel. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Elohim to wrath. You were delivered unto the enemies, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to Elohim. You have forgotten the everlasting Elohim that brought you up, and you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of Elohim coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O you that dwell about Zion, Elohim has brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate, because they departed from the Torah of Elohim. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Let them that dwell about Zion come, and remember you the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting has brought upon them. For he has brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of strange language, who neither reverenced old man nor pitied child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow, and left her that was alone, desolate without daughters. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O my children, go your way. I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto Yahuwah and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy has come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Elohim will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your Yeshua, from our Elohim, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Elohim, for your enemy has persecuted you, but shortly you shall see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Elohim, for you shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from Elohim, so, being returned, seek him ten times more. For he that has brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your Yeshua. Take a good heart, O Yerushalayim, for he that gave you that name will comfort you. Miserable are they that afflicted you and rejoiced at your fall. Miserable are the cities which your children served. Miserable is she that received your sons. For as she rejoiced at your ruin and was glad of your fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, 
long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Yerushalayim, look about you toward the east, and behold the joy that comes unto you from Elohim. Lo, your sons come, who you sent away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of Elohim. Chapter 5 Put off, O Yerushalayim, the garment of mourning and affliction, and put on the comeliness of the glory that comes from Elohim forever. Cast about you a double garment of the righteousness which comes from Elohim, and set a diadem on your head of the glory of the everlasting. For Elohim will show your brightness unto every country under heaven. For your name shall be called of Elohim forever, the peace of righteousness, the glory of Elohim's worship. Arise, O Yerushalayim, and stand on high, and look about toward the east. Behold, your children gathered from the east unto the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of Elohim. For they departed from you on foot, and were led away of their enemies. But Elohim brings them unto you, exalted with glory, as children of the kingdom. For Elohim has appointed that every high hill and banks of long continuance shall be cast down, and valleys filled up to make even the ground that Yasharel may go safely into the glory of Elohim. Moreover, even the woods and every sweet-smelling tree shall overshadow Yasharel by the commandment of Elohim. For Elohim shall lead Yasharel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that comes from him.